hey, that's it, three, four days a week. This cat, the freshman All-American from Alabama, 25 jacks, headed to Florida next year. This is his routine. You know what they say, right? If you wanna be the best, you gotta train like the best. Typical day in the life hitting wise, what are some drills that you may do? Like what's your routine looking like? So I always start off with uh, a top hand just for uh, get the back elbow connected tight to the body. And then I'll probably do three to four other things just depending on how I feel that day. Yeah, and you always start with the T too? It'll be either T sometimes and if, or I'll just do front flips to see the ball moving. All right, go ahead and hit it. We'll do our thing today. Are you a big guy that fills their hands in their swing or are you kind of, you know, like I know some guys just like to turn, think about their shoulders, you know, what do you, do you think hands a lot? I more think about my uh, hips and chest and okay. hips and chest posture, more of that. And then the hands just follow through with the hips and the chest and my posture. Good. Nice. So is this something you've developed, this routine, or is it something you worked on with your hitting coach? Yeah, it's kind of something I've developed over the years. It's changed every now and then. I work with my hitting coach at Bloomingdale High School, but like every now and then when I'd go down and see him, like he changed out the routine for something like that I can work on new that can fit my swing. Yeah. What's his name again? Chris Wilkin. Chris Wilkin. Next, I'm just gonna do uh, like just a little wrist flick just so I can feel my hands working. Taking the lower half out of it here? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Next, I'm just gonna do, a, a, I'll put the T like middle, middle away. And just trying to drive it back up to the back, like left corner of the net. And this is called like a RDL swing. So I'm really focusing on my hips and getting my right posture and hip hinge. Just basically doing RDL here. Boom. Do one of those and then the next one swing. Nice. Good. Yep. So that's why RDLs are so important right there. I never even thought about that. That's awesome. So you think about kind of an RDL feeling. That's literally what you're trying to feel in your back hip. Mm -hmm. So hey, get good at RDLs. That's a really good tip right there because a lot of kids can't really find their back hip. Coaches teach, hey, load the quad, load the hamstring, coil into the back hip. But what does that feel like? Feels like a difficult RDL, that's good. What's, um, and if you notice too, when he's doing this, he's not drifting forward out of it. He's riding that out, right? Watch him ride it out into it. So like the further he strides out, the further he has to counter rotate back. That's really good. Cause a lot of people do like the peacock, the flamingo drill or whatever, and they just drift forward to their front side. Like get in that again real quick. If I put this here, his head isn't gonna go past that. He's like turning behind the baseball. So this is a really good drill. Yeah, last week I was watching you hitting here and I saw this uh, band that you had rigged up and I was wondering what it was about. So is it that same drill, trying to get that same feel, but that's just different feedback? Yeah, so it's the same drill, but the band back here is just so you're not drifting forward. So you really have to stay in that back hit. And everything. So that's exactly what I was talking about, how he stays back with it. So watch him go into it. Good. Go into your land again. Stop. See how right before he swings, that band's pulling his leg back? So, Tommy Pham was in here last year hitting. And that's like the feel he was trying to get. He was trying to perfect that. Like right at land, he wanted to counter rotate and press out with this back foot. So this is a good uh, drill to do for that as well. Because the further you go forward, the more you have to counter rotate or else you're gonna fall over and become like a linear style hitter. So this is really good. And then you could take the band off like you were doing before and subconsciously you're gonna 
still think about it in your head and you're still gonna try to feel that out. So if you're doing a progression at home, you wanna be like him, right? Hit the band, do a couple reps, take the band off, do a couple reps, slow-mo the video, seeing if you're in the same position. And then you know you're in a good spot. Wanna try it on? Dude, and then that back knee drives down, front knee locks out. What else you got, T-Wise? Uh, one more. It's just another RDL thing, but it's taking taking more of my upper body out of it. Uh, looks like this. Okay. So you're basically swinging off one leg here. Yeah. Really trying to feel that, like my chest not flying open on this one because everything's coming across this way. Good, and how I cue people for RDLs, like what he's trying to feel, if you can't feel that, get into it real quick. So like picture, somebody's hand right here and you're just trying to break the person's hand between the crease in your hip and your abdominal wall so go into it feel that hinge and he's like trying to break my pinky finger between his abdomen and the hip so that's a good little cue if you can't find that hinge that he's talking about just stick your hand down there and try to clamp it in between that space i'll do one more thing before i start hitting just to work on like my hip separation I'll just get like right here, just work on separating my hips to feel how my hips work, and then I'll start going. So he hit the T. How many reps you do per side, just based on feel? Yeah, no, but not a lot, three to five, maybe sometimes eight if something's not feeling right, but not just a few of each. And you can also do everything I just showed you with front flips to make it harder since the ball's moving and added more of a timing aspect. So front flips, what do we got? What kind of stuff you do here? First, I'm just gonna do like a post ride to feel, just take my lower half out of it. And it's gonna be like a angled, like the pitchers over there, just so I can feel me not losing my lower half. Do you want the screen angled or just your angled? Just I'm angled. Okay. And where you want me to toss it, just middle? Yeah. Nice, what are we thinking now? I'll go front toss away, and then after front toss, I'm, I'm ready to go. One more. Hole in the wall, down with yeah. front flips. So now BP, talk, just talk about your approach a little bit on BP and I'll flip you some. I'm really trying to hit the ball, square up the ball as often as possible and hit like low to low line drives uh, just to keep myself on track because anyone can pretty much hit a BP homer. Low line drives, low trajectories, where you, where you want to be at. You need to throw some or are you ready? I'm good, man. All right. I got the best BP around. Spoke too soon. <laughs> nice. That's money BP. Money beeps. Best beeps in the game. Best BP in the game right there. All right, I always ask you guys, coming off a successful year, two strike approach. Guys are making like different adjustments, whatever it may be. We did a video with Tommy. Tommy had spread way out, right? He still has enough juice to hit it out to any part of the ballpark with two strikes, especially with an aluminum bat. You do too. What is your two strike approach? Like, what do you do? So I'll choke up a little bit, probably three, four inches right okay. around here. 
I'll get a little wider. My step for my swing is still the same, but I'm really just focusing, like making the zone smaller. Cause normally when you get two strikes, you want to swing at everything so you don't strike out, but you want to make the zone smaller so you're not chasing the pitchers outside the zone. What about film wise on guys? You're facing a certain pitcher. Are you a guy that goes in and looks at, you know, film, looks at your previous at bats? Like when you're coming up with a game plan for the game, is it more, hey, this is what this guy has, I'm reacting, or do you actually like sit down and formulate like a different plan and approach for that day? Uh, it just depends on the guy, but most of the time it was more of like seeing what this guy has and where he's throwing those pitches in the zone and those two strikes accounts. More just reacting to that, uh, whatever that pitch is. Do you sit pitches at all? Like. Hey, this guy, you know, 50% of the time, you know, throws a curveball in this count. So I'm, I'm sold out on curveball. Or are you good at reacting fastball or sitting fastball, reacting off speed like some guys do? I would say most of the time I'm sitting fastball and reacting off speed. Uh, like I'm always like looking for the pitch out over the plate away. And then like you're most, you have quick enough hands to react to the pitches inside or curveball that comes in. But say there's times where this, a pitcher is like 50% off speed or like 70% off speed, then I'll sit like off speed pitch because you're gonna get one at one point. And then anything else that you feel like you do differently than other people that you know separates you from you know your process and whatever it may be, like in the batter's box, or is it just you stick to the plan no matter what? I mean, I normally just go up there with a bunch of confidence that I'm better than the pitcher and just stick to my plan of being on time for the best fastball. If you're on time for the best fastball, you're gonna most likely gonna have success more than none. How often are you hitting, like at school? Like, is it, do you do early work hitting and stuff like that? Or is it something you do every day? Like, I know some guys just like to, hey, whatever the team allows me, mm -hmm. right? I show up, take swings. Are you the guy that's taking extra swings and stuff? Like, Yeah, I mean, I take a good bit of extra swings. Just depends, like most of the time I'll, before I start hitting, I'll run through like a little series like that I did today or in a movement prep and then like take some maybe, whether it's machine, some balls off the machine or curve balls before practice. And then maybe like extra BP after practice if something's not feeling right. I'm always one that's in the cage if something doesn't feel right, working on that to get back where I feel like I should, like where I'm most comfortable. But these drills here, these are staples you always try to stay around, you know, per yeah, day? I'll probably do them like four, five, four, three, four times a week. But it's something that I've just built a routine on and I feel like it's good. They're like good feels for my swing and how it works. So it's just going back in, feeling those feels to get me back on track to be as consistent as I can be. Well, hey, brother, I appreciate you taking us through your routine. I'm sure a lot of kids are going to get see a lot of value in that. Hey, that's it. Three, four days a week. This cat the freshman All-American from Alabama, 25 jacks, headed to Florida next year. This is whose routine. You know what they say, right? If you want to be the best, you got to train like the best. Go ahead, add those in. And always remember that I pump out two of these videos per week. Do me a favor and subscribe for me. I appreciate you. Catch you next week. Game rewards the grind. It knows how much you invested.